Okay, so let's jump right into my three-step RIP SAT essay exam technique. Now I call this technique RIP, which stands for read, illustrate, and plug in the pieces. Three steps. Now, later, you'll see how my RIP SAT essay exam technique also incorporates my T-zone chart analysis technique. Now, learning this technique now will be useful and efficient because my T-zone chart analysis technique is also used to help you to successfully answer your SAT multiple choice questions as well. So, I'm gonna jump right in and we're gonna demonstrate this technique using a sample SAT problem provided by the College Board, which is the creator of the SAT. Now, after you have developed the critical reading and analysis skills you learn in this course, which will be developed even more as you practice these techniques, you should be able to complete the first two steps of this technique quicker and quicker as time goes on because you want to leave yourself as much time as possible to complete the last step of this technique, which is actually completing and writing out your final essay response. And so step one of my RIP technique requires that you read the problem. And so whenever you start working on an essay problem, I want you to remove all writing utensils, pencils, pens, remove everything from your hands and I want you to take the time to read the problem. And so within the process of actually reading the entire problem, the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the call of the question. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to find the call of the question and you want to read that first. So let me show you what that looks like. So here is our sample problem. And this is what the entire problem looks like, okay? Now, we're going to go down to the bottom part of the question and find the call of the question. Okay, and here it is. It's right here. Okay, it says, write an essay in which you explain how Paul Bogart builds an argument to persuade his audience that natural darkness should be preserved, and so on and so forth. Now, once you read the call of the question, you'll have a better idea of which facts are relevant as you read the problem. So you want to go back and start at the beginning of the problem, all right? So now I'm going to show you what I like to do in my RIP process because now we're practicing, we're developing the skills. And so as time goes on, you will be able to do this quicker. It may not look like it now, but I promise you, you want to have a plan for how you're going to answer each essay question and you want to follow that same plan every single time for every single essay question. And so the first thing I do is I find this call of the question. Now this is just a part of the call of the question, okay? So what I like to do then is go back up to the beginning and I'm gonna show you what my uh, problem looks like once I start working on it. Okay, so now over here on this side, this is that portion, what I call the second part of the call of the question. And now I have just moved it up to the top so that you can see that this is just one part of the call of the question here. There is also this other part, which is called in some instances or by some people, your essay prompt, okay? So what I find is that this is a, uh, some type of a confusion technique that the College Board uses to split up these two pieces of the call of the question. They leave this part here in the beginning 
and they put this part down at the end. And so when I start to read this call of the question, write an essay in which you explain how Paul Bogart builds an argument to persuade his audience that natural darkness should be preserved. And then in your essay, they want you to analyze how Bogart uses one or more of the features in the directions that precede the passage. Okay, so now this is referring to this part right here. So to split these two up is a distraction technique. Okay, so now I'm bringing it to the front. This is what I'm gonna do in my practice. Now, in your uh, time that you will be uh, answering your actual question, you will have developed these skills and you'll be able to get this process down. But what I want you to do is I want you to take the time to come back up to the beginning and just jot this question down in the beginning so that your full call of the question is all in one place. And then you can see now that it is referring to one or more features over here, your evidence, such as factors or examples to support claims, reasoning to develop ideas and to connect claims and evidence, stylistic or persuasive elements, such as word choice, or appeals to emotion to add power to the ideas expressed, or features of your own choice to strengthen the logic and persuasiveness of his argument. Be sure that your analysis focus on the, focuses on the most relevant features of the passage. Okay, so now, now that I have read my entire call of the question, now as I begin to read through the problem, I will have a better idea of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for evidence, such as facts or examples, reasoning, stylistic or persuasive elements such as word choice or appeals to emotion. So now I know what I'm looking for so that I can read in a more critical manner as I read this problem. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start to mark some of the things that the call of the question is asking me to find. Okay. And so here I see claims. I see evidence, I see more claims, more evidence. And so as I go through, I'm beginning to see the features that I am being asked to find and to analyze in my essay response. And so I even see some reasoning here that is connecting some claims and evidence. 